Hi everyone. Welcome to our video solutions for your CERDs pack. Okay, let's just get that ready for you and focused. Right, okay, so you should have done this hopefully on Friday, maybe over the weekend, okay? And we're going to walk through how we do the questions in the pack now. Um, this was a little bit like a self-assessment, so as you go through, make sure you correct your own um, solutions as you go through. Don't just mark it, actually correct them as well and make sure you fully understood. Okay, so we started with root 3 times root 7. Please remember our rule that the square root of one number times the square root of another number can become the square root of the product of those two numbers. Okay, so that informs us for this. Um, which would give us 3 times 7, which is the square root of 21, okay? For the square root of 24 over the square root of 6, okay, I'm going to write this like this. It's very similar um, to what we've done here, okay? If you remember our rule, this means that we can actually write this as the square root of that division. And 24 divided by 6 is 4, so that gives us the square root of 4, which gives us a final answer of 2. Uh, for this question, we want to think about how we're writing it out. I would change this to 2 times 3 times the square root of 3 times the square root of 5. Okay. When we do the 2 times 3, that gives us 6. And when we do the square root of 3 times the square root of 5, we get the square root of 15. Okay, moving on. Similarly, let's write this as a fraction like we did in part B. Okay, let think about the fact that 10 divided by 2 is 5, so we can change this to 5 root 8 over root 2. But we can bring the root 8 over root 2 together into one third, so that's going to be 5 times root of 8 halves. And we should know that 8 divided by 2 is 4, so we get 5 root 4, and root 4 is 2, so 5 times 2 gives us a final answer of 10. Okay, and finally, you should remember that the square root of a number times the square root of the same number gives you the number itself, so the answer to that one should be 3. So, well done, those of you who got those. Excellent. All right, similarly here, let's think about writing this out. So, we've got the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 times another square root of 2 times another square root of 2. Square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is 2. Same here. So, 2 times 2 is 4. Now we move to our simplifying questions. Okay, so remember we're trying to pull out the root of a square number so that we can simplify. I can change root 75 to the square root of 25 times 3, which I can write as the square root of 25 times the square root of 3, and the square root of 25 is 5, so my final answer is 5 root 3. Let's take a look at root 32. If you struggle a bit, you can think about your factor pairs, 1 times 32. 2 times 16, definitely going to use that. 16 is a square number, so that gives us root 16 root 2, okay, which becomes 4 root 2 because the square root of 16 is 4. Okay, similarly here, I know that can become 4 root 2, and which would give us 2 root 2 as our final answer. And this one we had in the examples we did in the video, so let's take a look. That would give me 10 root 2. Two. Okay, so that's us simplifying our thirds. Okay, so we move on to why we do that. Okay, so that was our next step, if you remember. We simplify the thirds so that we can add them together or subtract them. All right, so let's take a look at this one. I'm going to change it to root 25 root 2 for the 50 plus root 16 root 2, which we know is 5 root 2 plus 4 root 2, which gives us a final answer of 9 root 2. Okay, this one here, um, let's have a think. Yeah, we can have a 16 times 5 for the 80, so let's have root 16 root 5, and then plus root 4 root 5. If you remember back to the videos, it did say to you that these roots should match, so that we can simplify. Uh, root 16 becomes 4 root 5 plus 2 root 5, okay, which gives us 6 root 5. All right, so we know that this is going to be a root 2 because this first one's very straightforward, root 100 root 2 minus, I would think half of 72 is 36, perfect. Okay, and that's going to give us 10 root 2 minus 6 root 2, 
which gives us a final answer of 4 root 2. <clears throat> and uh, this one adds a little bit of a twist. We do have a 3 out in front, which means 3 times the root 12. But that's okay. We're still going to split that up into a root 4 root 3 for the root 12 plus um, root 25 root 3 for the 75. Root 4 is 2, so that's the same as saying 3 times 2 root 3. Okay, use a bracket like I did in the previous video just to help you keep track. Plus 5 root 3. Uh, 3 times 2 is 6 root 3. Plus the 5 root 3, which means our final answer is 11 root 3. 6 plus 5 is 11. Okay, lovely. All right, so we move on to question six. Okay, so here we have a rectangle, and um, it's asking us to find the perimeter first. So let's fill those in. So root two, five root two. So that would mean I have five root two plus another five root two plus another root two plus another root two. All right, so that's five, 10, 11, 12 root two. Done. All right, and then it says to find the area. So we're going to multiply them. So five root two times root 2. We know that root 2 times root 2 is 2, so that becomes 5 times 2, which becomes 10 centimeters squared. Okay, so that's one of our applications. They will give you shapes like rectangles to work with. All right, we move to our product um, rule again, but this time uh, we're going to have to then simplify. So yes, this does become the square root of 6 times 8, but 6 times 8 is 48, so the square root of 48. I can now simplify this. Think about your 48. 1 times 48, nope. 2 times 24, no square numbers. But 3 times 16, 16 is a square number. So we get root 16 root 3, which we know gives us a final answer of 4 root 3. Okay, uh, another one where we have to simplify. So we get root 9 root 3 plus root 25 root 3. Notice those match again. That gives us 3 root 3 plus 5 root 3, which gives us a final answer of 8 root 3. Okay, lovely. Okay, so uh, the next thing we moved on to was rationalizing the denominator. Okay, so this was a simple one. Uh, if you remember, we wanted to multiply by the same root when we just had the one root on the uh, in the denominator. So we're going to multiply by root 5, top and bottom. Okay, that's going to give me 15 root 5 over root 5 times root 5, which is 5. That can cancel. And so my final answer is 3 root 5. It is over 1, but obviously that's redundant. We can just write 3 root 5. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. Okay, again, I know I can take out a 100. Okay, those match now. Okay. Those thirds, so that's going to give me 10 root 6 plus 2 root 6, which gives me 12 root 6. Okay, so good job those of you who got that. Okay, so back to rationalizing. Let's take a look. So we're going to multiply by the root 3, top and bottom, which gives me 12 root 3 over 3. Root 3 times root 3 is 3, remember. And again, we can cancel. So our final answer is 4 root 3. Okay, um, but these ones definitely first multiply them together. So that's going to give me the square root of 64, which right away we know is 8. Okay, so that's why we use that uh, product rule that I taught you. And now we're expanding brackets. Okay, so just like quadratics, we're going to write that out twice. Root 3 plus root 5 times another root 3 plus root 5. Okay, now that's going to be root 3 times root 3, which is 3. Root 3 times root 5 is plus root 15. Root 5 times root 3 is plus another root 15. And root 5 times root 5 is plus 5. We now simplify. 3 plus 5 is 8. And then we have 2 root 15s. Just occasionally you're going to get something that you can simplify further. In this case, uh, I can't simplify the 15 further, so that's fine. That's our final answer of 8 plus 2 root 15. Okay, let's do this one next. So we can go straight into our expanding. 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times minus root 2 is minus 5 root 2. Root 2 times 5 is plus 5 root 2. And root 2 times minus root 2 is minus 2. Okay, those cancel out, which is nice. And 25 minus 2 is 23. 
for our final answer. So well done, guys. Right, moves on to question 11. Okay, so this is like linear expansion. That's fine. Root 3 times root 27. You know what? I don't really want to do 3 times 27, possibly, um, but I think it's worth it. Okay, if you don't remember, you can always do this in the margin. 3 times 7 is 21. Carry the 2. 3 times 2 is 6 plus the 2 is 8. Lovely. So it's definitely worth doing that because right away we can see root 81, which has a square root. And then root 3 times minus root 3 is minus 3. Square root of 81 is 9, so take away 3 gives us a final answer of 6. Okay. Right, so now let's look at a little bit of a, um, a substitution question. So they're now starting to play with it a bit. It's not just a straightforward third question. They're asking you to substitute and then write your answer um, in the simplest form. So let's do that. We know that this is going to be the square root of 15 because that's b over the square root of 2 times the square root of 30. Okay, that's not a problem. Let's bring those together because we can multiply them. So that's going to give me root 15 over the square root of 60. And what you might notice is that 60 does divide by 15. This is very useful, of course, because now I can change this to the square root of 15 over root 4 times root 15. Those cancel. Uh, leaving me with 1 and 1. And the square root of 4 is 2, so I get 1 over 2. And that's my final answer of a half. All right? So we will have the ability to cancel things down when we have a fraction and thirds at times. And so it's important uh, that you work that out so that you can get the simplest form. Okay, so let's take a look here. When we did these in the video where we learned this, um, I said to you, don't worry about the whole number. Just worry about the third. So we're only going to multiply by the root 3, top and bottom. Okay, that's going to give us 12 root 3 over 7 times 3, which is 21. Okay, both of these divide by 3, so I can make that a 4 and make that a 7 again. And so my final answer will be 4 root 3 over 7. Now, in question 13, again, they're asking you to substitute. So this one here, a little bit easier. Remember, root 3 times root 3 gives you 3. Okay, that's why that's only worth uh, one mark. Here, a little bit more involved. Okay, so we're going to have root 3 plus root 48. Okay, squared is equal to 75. So let's have a think about this. How could we show that that is equal to 75? They're telling us it's equal to 75. So I actually want to work with this. I want to turn this into that. So let's do that. We're going to have to expand. Okay, before I expand, I'm going to look at simplifying my root 48, which is root 16 root 3, which I know is 4 root 3. That's much easier for me. So root 3 plus the 4 root 3. And then another root 3 plus the 4 root 3. And then I'm going to expand. So root 3 times root 3 is equal to 3. Root 3 times 4 root 3 is equal to 4 times 3, which is 12. Uh, 4 root 3 times root 3 again is 4 times 3, which is 12. And then 4 root 3 times 4 root 3, well, let's have a think. That's going to be 4 times 4, which is 16. And then times root 3 times root 3, which is times 3. I'm going to put that in a bracket because that takes a little bit more work. Uh, 12 plus 12 is 24, plus 3 is 27. Okay, and 16 times 3 we should now know is 48. And yes, indeed, that does equal 75. So we've shown it. Finished. Right, question 14, okay, so we need to expand, so let's do that straight away. 3 times 4 is 12, okay, 3 times root 2 is 3 root 2. Uh, 4 times root 8, oh, sorry, there's a plus sign. Okay, so 4 times root 8 is 4 root 8, and root 8 times root 2 is plus root 16, because 8 times 2 is 16. Right, leave the 12 at the moment, and the 3 root 2, and let's take a look at simplifying this. That can become... 4, and then the root 8 becomes root 4, root 2, and root 16 we know is 4. Let's we'll simplify those numbers now. 
Okay, so that's going to be 12 plus 4, which is 16. Uh, let's take a look at this. Let's leave that. 4 times root 4 is 4 times 2, which is 8. So we get 8 root 2. So our final answer is going to be 16 plus 3 plus 8, which is 11 root 2. Okay. All right. In order to do this one, we need to do some simplifying first, like it says. So this is going to be root 4 root 2 for the root 8. And we should know that this one's root 9 root 2. Okay. Uh, that's going to give us uh, 5 times 2, which is 10 root 2, plus my 3 root 2, which gives me a final answer of 13 root 2. So well done, those of you who got that. Good work. Okay. Back to rationalizing. So times root 2 times root 2 gives us 8 root 2 over 2. We know that that cancels, and we get a final answer of 4 root 2. They're very typical, these questions. Nice two marks, okay? Don't forget when we get to these ones to write them out fully. Okay, root 7 times root 7 is uh, root 49, which is just 7, okay? And root 7 times minus root 3 is minus root 21. And another minus root 3 times root 7 is another minus root 21. Okay, and then minus root 3 times minus root 3 is plus 3. So that's going to give us 10. We bring those together. And then minus 2 root 21, which is our final answer. Okay, well done. Right, root 11 plus root 99. So I know my base is going to be the root 11. Okay, so we can split this one up into root 9 times root 11. That works really well. Root 11 plus, uh, sorry, 3 root 11 gives us a total of 4 root 11. Okay, so we're writing this one out fully. Okay, that's going to give me 8 times 8, which is 64, and then 8 times minus root 3, and then another minus root 3 times 8, okay, and minus root 3 times minus root 3 is plus 3. Bring these together, 64 out of 3 is 67, minus 8 minus 8 is minus 16 root 3, and that can go on our answer line. So that's final. Well done. Okay, another show that question. I want to show that that is equal to the 98. So let's get this expanded. Um, maybe before we do that, we even want to work on this a little bit. So let's do that in the margin. That becomes 3 times the root 4 root 2, which we know will become 3 times 2 is 6 root 2. So that's easier to use. So plus 6 root 2, and then we have root 2 plus 6 root 2. Okay, let's expand. Root 2 times root 2 is equal to 2, okay? Root 2 times 6 root 2 is plus 6 root 2 root 2. Um, 6 root 2 times root 2 is plus another 6 root 2 root 2. And 6 root 2 times 6 root 2 is plus 6 times 6 times root 2 times root 2. I don't mind if you use time signs for those ones if that's a bit easier, okay? That's a 2. Root 2 times root 2 is 2. So 2 times 6 is 12. That one's also equal to 12. And let's take a look at this. 6 times 6 is 36. Root 2 times root 2 is 2. 2 times 36 is 72. So to get our final answer, add everything up. 72. Add 12 is going to be 84. Add another 12 is 96. Add 2 is 98. Final answer. You can see why that's worth three marks. There's a little bit more work here to be done. Okay, so that's worth another process mark. <clears throat> right, and we move on to our first problem-solving question involving the thirds. It says the midpoints of the sides of a square of side 10 centimeters, okay, uh, join together to form another square, and that this process is repeated to create the shaded square. So, I mean, let's have a think. Find the area of the shaded square. Well, I know, if we just look at this one situation here, that that side of that triangle is 5 and 5. Okay? That's definitely a right angle. So, I can find this. I'm going to leave it in third form, though. Okay? So, let's take a look at using Pythagoras to find this length here. 
Okay, let's call it x just so it's a bit easier. We now know that x squared is the hypotenuse, so x is the hypotenuse. So if x squared is equal to 5 squared plus 5 squared, x squared is equal to 50 as a result, which means that x is the square root of 50. But we know I can simplify that now to root 25 root 2 or 5 root 2. So I know that this length here, and in fact all of these lengths, are 5 root 2. Okay? Right. So that's all the way along. So now I need to think about the fact, well actually I'm going to need to do this again to get this side length, except that's half of 5 root 2. So let's go to a fresh uh, triangle. So we've got 5 root 2 over 2, 5 root 2 over 2. Okay, and we're going to use Pythagoras again to work this out. So let's call that y. All right, so we're now going to know that y squared is equal to 5 root 2 over 2 squared plus 5 root 2 over 2 squared. Okay, so let's see how that works out. Not worry about the square rooting yet. Let's see if we can simplify this. So that is going to give me uh, 5 times 5 times root 2 times root 2, because I'm squaring it, all over 2 times 2. And then there's another one of those. Okay, don't worry about the fact that I've gone over the answer line. Uh, 2 times root 2 all over 2 times 2. Okay, so let's take a look at those separately. Uh, we know 2 times 2 is 2, times 5, times 5, so 2 times 5 is 10, times 5 is 50, and that's a 4. So we've got 50 over 4. Okay, remember this is y squared is equal to 50 over 4 plus another 50 over 4. Well, that's quite convenient. 50 over 4 is 12.5 plus another 12.5, which luckily for us gives us y squared is equal to 25, which means I now know that y is 5. Perfect. Well, if that's 5 for the y, and this is a square, and they want the area of the shaded square, that would mean that the area will be equal to 5 times 5, which is 25 centimeters squared. Final answer. Okay, so quite a clever question. Feel free to rewind and look at that again. Okay, to make sure you fully understand, um, but the surge really helped us in terms of being able to simplify them, obviously, that helped us get to this more easily. Right, so now this says, given that 10 minus root 32 over the square root of 2 is equal to this, where a and b are integers, find the values of a and b. So I have to turn this into this version, which means I'm going to have to rationalize. So let's do that first. 10 minus root 32 over root 2 times root 2 times root 2. Okay, so that's going to give us on the top 10 root 2 minus the square root of 64 all over 2. All right, can we start to rearrange that a little bit? Yes, we can. Okay, so square root of 64 is 8. And we can divide by 2 there, but let's just write out one more step. 10 root 2 minus 8 over 2, and now we can simplify. Okay, 2 goes into 10, 5, so 5 root 2 minus 8 divided by 2, which is 4. Not quite in the correct format. I need to swap these around. So I actually could say that that is equal to negative 4 plus 5 root 2, which means A is my negative 4, and B is my 5. Okay, so hopefully that one makes sense. In order to do it, you do need to rearrange, okay, when we get to the end, or you might put the wrong letters down or the wrong numbers for the wrong letters. All right, and that brings us to our last question for the pack, which says that a shed has dimensions in meters of height equal to root 5, width equal to root 6, and length equal to 9 root 2. Find the volume of the shed and give your answer in the form of A root 15, where A is an integer. Okay, so we know volume is going to be length times width times height. Okay, so let's put that in. So our length, if I do this in order, is 9 over root 2. We're multiplying that by root 6 and then by root um, 5. 
Okay, that's fine, not problem. So let's do that. 9 times root 6 times root 5 is root 30 over root 2. Now I would say rationalize, but actually we're going to use the division concept here, okay, because that is going to make it a bit easier for ourselves. Um, this can split into root 15 times root 2. So 9 times root 15 times root 2 over root 2 is going to naturally cancel out that denominator. Okay, so that's how I would do that because now we have our final answer of 9 root 15, which we can write here. Okay, they haven't asked for you to state A in this question, unlike the previous one. They've just asked for the volume. They've told you it has to be in that format. What's nice is because I have the root 15, I know I'm probably correct. Okay, so I hope that went really well for you. Go back and see how you did. Feel free to email your teacher to let them know. Okay, and um, yes, uh, next video will be on the algebraic fractions pack.